All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to make an equilateral triangle in KOWP, uh, like one you see here. This is take two of this video. I did post a video yesterday, and shame on me, my math was incorrect. So uh, I'm going to fix that now. So if you watched the video yesterday, I've already pulled that from YouTube um, because there was a mistake in my math. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so um, here's how we really do it. I'm going to run through all this stuff step by step again. And uh, so if you did watch the video yesterday, make sure you go back and change your formula. I'm also going to show you how to rotate this thing using a recommendation from uh, another user. I had a comment yesterday about that as well. Um, Marcus G pointed out my mistake in the math, and then I can't remember who posted the other comment about using the Y center, adjusting the Y center in a complex animation to make this thing rotate uh, without having that wobble effect. So let's just load a blank preset. I'm going to add a triangle. Shoot this uh, triangle to the center of the screen. And we're still going to take some of the same approaches that I mentioned in the other video, but I'm going to stop referring, referring to that video because some of you probably didn't get a chance to see it. Um, so the width of 200, that's changing the width, uh, as you can see, of this triangle. And then the height is you want to make it technically taller. I'm going to bump both of these up to 400. Now, one would think that this right here is an equilateral triangle, but it's not. Uh, the height of 400, that's the length of this side right here. And the width is actually this length right here, this red line that you see right there. So you actually have a red square, but really we're talking about the triangle. An equilateral triangle, we want all three sides to be equal. Um, so if this is 400, I want this to be 400, which it's not. It's actually longer than that because this length right here, this width right here is 400, but not the length of that line right there. So we got to fix that. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that with a little bit of math. So I'm going to add an equilateral triangle into here. And let's rotate this thing to make it kind of look like the one we have over there. And I want to draw a line from here to here. So this is like going right through the center. Now I'm going to base it off of the, the variables, if you will, over here to kind of make it match up. And I'm also going to show you how to incorporate a number of global variables so that we can change the size of this triangle quickly and still maintain the equilateral properties. So since the height, you know, this height right here is referring to the length of that line uh, or this side of the triangle, um, I'm going to refer to this entire piece over here as H. Okay, so this whole piece from here all the way down to here, um, that's going to be called H. Well, the only thing I'm really interested in, though, is this part right here. And that's going to be half of it. All right, so that's going to be H over 2. So we got this piece, and notice by me drawing this line here, I form a right triangle. And if this whole side is H, I also want this side here to be H. So I'm going to write a H for that piece. All right. And then to find this piece right here, notice that piece, that blue line right there is actually going to be the same as this red line that we have here. This red line that we have here is going to be our width. See how that, that red line's getting longer as I change the width or it's getting shorter right now? But notice the height's not changing. So that's going to be that distance from here all the way across. And I'm going to refer to that as the letter W in uh, this example. Well, notice I've got three sides in this right triangle right here. So that's all I'm really concerned with. I've called this whole side over here H. That's the length of this side of the triangle, which means that has to be H. And yes, this up here needs to be H as well, but I don't care about that right now. But what we're concerned with is this right triangle here. Uh, let's call this side A. That's a leg. Let's call this side B. That's our other leg. And C is our hypotenuse. So maybe you have heard of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And notice I do have some letters um, or variables um, instead of A, B, and C. A is H over 2, so I'm going to write H over 2 squared plus B squared. Well, B, I called it W. That's going to be the width when we use our formula right here in a minute. So that's W squared is equal to C squared. C squared. So C, we call that H, so we have H squared. Now, what we want to do here... Um, I'm, since I know the height that I have right here, this height, that's definitely a side of my triangle. Um, that's that H that we have right here. Well, what we want to do is we want to find W in terms of the height or find the width in terms of the height. So I'm going to take this equation right here and I'm going to solve for W in terms of H. 
So let's go ahead and do that right now. And let me slide this junk over a little bit. So squaring this fraction, we square the top and bottom. So that's going to be h squared over 4 plus w squared equals h squared. And um, maybe if you watched the video yesterday, um, that's where I made my mistake. I made my mistake um, when I did this half of this side over here. I did w divided by 2, but it should be h divided by 2. So to solve this equation for w, multiply everything by 4. So if we multiply this by 4, we're getting rid of the fraction. That just leaves us with h squared plus multiply this by 4 that's going to be 4 w squared and multiply this by 4 as well we have 4 h squared so now let's subtract the h squared to get the 4 w squared by itself so subtracting that h squared from over here that will leave us with 3 h squared on this side so we have 4 w squared equals 3 h squared let's divide by 4 so w squared equals 3 h squared over 4 and then let's take the square root of both sides. So the square root of both sides, square root of w squared is w. We want the positive square root here. And the square root of this junk right here is going to be the square root of 3 um, because we can't take the square root of 3, but we can take the square root of h squared. That's just going to be h. And then we can take the square root of 4, which is going to be 2. And this, if you've taken some trigonometry courses before, maybe this looks familiar. Square root of 3 over 2 um, times h, or maybe you've seen a variable a or something like that. But basically what this is going to do now, uh, this is going to give us this width, that distance from here to here or here to here. It's going to give us that width in terms of h. And what this is going to allow us to do now is create an equilateral triangle. And not only that, we can dynamically change this with a, with a number global variable. So I'm going to come back into globals. And by all means, you can put this inside of a component or a widget instead of making a straight up preset about it. But since I'm going to be animating, I'm going to leave it as is. Let's call, uh, let's create a number global variable and I'm going to call it height. And I'm just going to let the min and max stay where it is. And I'm just going to set it to somewhere. So I'm around 248. But we can change this and we will see things change dynamically in a moment. So what I'm going to do there, the height, I'm going to apply that height number global variable directly to this, like so. All right, so definitely that has changed. But now we want to change this width because clearly this is not an equilateral triangle. It's still isosceles. But we want to use a formula for our width. So I'm going to use my calculator here. And my width is going to be equal to the square root of 3 times the height divided by 2. So go into the calculator. And we want to scroll down to Math Utilities. And let's type in our formula. So we have a dollar sign. And then we want, well, I tell you what, let me use the square root formula that we have right inside of here. Let me back out of that real quick. So there's our square root right here. So we're going to take the square root of 3. Well, the square root of 3 is exactly what we see right there. A pretty good approximation, at least. We want to multiply that by the height. Well, that's going to be times our GV height, since we want to change this dynamically. And then we want to divide that by 2. So divide by 2. So boom. Now what we have, if I check this, we should have an equilateral triangle now. And this, you know, I think I had something with a square root of 5 in it where I jacked it up in the last video, but this is an equilateral triangle. It's going to be as perfect as you can get it in KLWP because of the rounding. You know, it did round the square root of 3, but still it's close enough, right? Now, not only that, since we created a number global variable, this is the cool part about KLWP and the math. This is what I really enjoy about it, even though I mess it up sometimes. Um, but as you can see, is I, I can change this number global variable, and it's changing the triangle, but it's maintaining that equilateral property. Still, all three sides look to be the same. So I'm going to come back into this triangle here, and I'm going to just rotate the triangle 270 degrees. So now we got like a typical looking equilateral triangle where you have you know one side across the bottom like we have there from here what I want to talk about now is rotating this thing and this is gonna be a little bit different than what I did in the video yesterday as well if I come to animation for this item and I just set it to loop and I'm gonna set it to rotate and I'm going to do straight and I'm also going to set the uh, Duration, I'm gonna make it rotate a lot faster so we can see the wobble effect here. So let me save this. Let me go back to the home screen 
and what we have here you can see the wobble and what we want to do is we want this thing to rotate um, a lot straighter without that wobble effect and what we can do there if we go into KOWP well what I went ahead and did is I paused the video tinkered around with some numbers and I'm going to show you how to get you know notice this right here is nowhere near as wobbly um, versus what we had a moment ago now what uh, what you want to pay attention to here and I'm still doing a loop but instead of us doing a rotate we're gonna do a complex animation and this was a recommendation I got from a comment yesterday as well uh, the complex animation what the reason why we're doing this is because if you go and set up the complex animation uh, rotate Y center um, whatever your size is so notice I got 110 in here right now now I'm just gonna back out of here and I'm gonna go back and look at the size of my triangle in my number global variable so you got to do some tinkering here but uh, whatever size you have here so I got it at 659 well if you take that number and divide by six that's going to it's dealing with centroids in centers um, ortho centers and all that stuff so I'm not gonna dive into all that triangular property or triangular properties but if you if I adjust this size it's gonna to start to wobble again but let's just say okay we're around 224 let me save that let me go back to the home screen and now as you can see it has the wobble effect but let's remember that size 224 if we take 224 and we divide it by 6 so if we were to set our Y center at roughly 37 now depending you may have to do negative 37 or positive 37 um, assuming you've done the rotation but I if we set it to around 37 it should fix this and that's just a quick formula to get that center set up right so I'm going to go back with that smaller triangle at 224 and we took 224 we divide by 6 so if I go set up my complex animation and I'll show you how I have this set up right now uh, at 0% you want to set the rotate Y center and change this to whatever uh, your size is divided by 6 and we said that was roughly 37 right so if we set this to 37 and then also what you want to make sure you do I'm gonna save that make sure at a hundred percent you have it rotate 360 that means it's gonna be 360 degrees um, so if I check that save it go back to the home screen we should have see how I mean it's got a slight wobble but you is somewhere in that 37 range because I'm taking the the number global number global variable height and divide it by six that's going to give you roughly where you want your y center to be but as you can see now it is rotating nicely and we don't have that wobble effect like we had earlier and um yeah so there you have it complex animations changing the y center to get it to rotate nicely and then going back towards the beginning of the video us correcting or me correcting my mistake from yesterday where i did not do the uh, algebra i didn't do my side length correctly but now you do have the correct formula uh square root of three over two times the height whatever height you have set up for your triangle and if you do that correctly you should have an equilateral triangle or as good as you can get it in terms of KOWP because of the rounding and that's it for this video I hope it helped